Hey there, let's look at this equation y equals the square root of x. And let's go ahead and make the graph of that. And let's review square roots before we do that. So let's say we took the square root from right here and I'll replace the x with a zero. Let's see, what's the square root of zero? That just means what number times itself is zero, and that's zero, right? Zero times zero is zero. Let's do the square root of one. What number times itself is one? That's one, right? One times one is one. What about the square root of two? It gets a little messy. I don't want to deal with that. What number, what number times itself is two? It's going to be some decimal, one point something. You can punch that in the calculator if you want to see what it is, but I'm going to skip that. For the same reasons, I'm going to skip the square root of 3. But the square root of 4 is easier to deal with. What number times itself gives us 4? It's 2. 2 times 2 is 4. I'm going to skip the square root of 5, 6, 7, and 8 because they get messy. And I'll just go right to the square root of 9. And what do you think the square root of 9 is? Hopefully you're thinking 3, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9. You should also notice here, I didn't deal with any um, negative values. For example, the square root of negative 4. I didn't deal with that because if you punch this into the calculator, the square root of negative 4, you will get an error. And I'm not going to get into the reasons why in this video, but that's the reason we're just sticking with positive x values. So now let's go ahead and graph this. So we'll start here. We'll take the square root of 0 which is just 0, right? We already did that right over here. What's the square root of 1? That's 1. Right over here, and we did it here as well. I skipped a 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'll go up 2 units. Right here, right? Square root of 4 is 2 from right here, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I'll go over to 9. I'll take the square root of 9, and I get 3 right here. And there we go. That's the graph of this equation right here. y equals the square root of x. And that's a good one to try to remember or memorize right here. Now we can stretch this graph. We can shift it left and right and so on. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to apply transformations. So let's say we had this situation where I wanted to graph y equals 2 times the square root of this whole quantity x minus 3. Well, the first thing you want to do is identify your parent function, which should be pretty clear here, but it's not always so clear. So the way I do that is I just look at, for this particular equation, everything without the um, numbers, right? So in other words, just the y, the equals, the x, and the square root. I don't include the 2 and the minus 3. So that's our parent function. It's y equals the square root of x. That's how I identify it. And let's go ahead and write that down. y equals the square root of x. And we'll graph this parent function first. Well, we've already done that. So let's do that a little more quickly this time. Remember, these are my x values. And I'm taking the square root of each one of these x values from looking just at the parent function. So the square root of 0 is 0 right here. The square root of 1 is 1. Right, I'm just graphing the parent function. We've already done that. I'll skip to 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So that's the first thing I do, is I graph the parent function. And when I'm doing this, I actually, I'm not going to put a um, curved a curve here. I'm just going to leave the points separate. I'm not going to connect them. I'm just going to connect my final graph. So the, the black points represent y equals the square root of x. Now i got to look at this two times right here. So hopefully you remember that when you multiply by 2, right, it causes a vertical stretch. This is basically saying to take 2 times the square root of x, if I don't include the minus 3. So what I'm going to do is just stretch each one of these points. I'm going to double each point. That's another way to look at it. So 
In other words, when I took the square root of zero, right, I got zero, and then I'm going to multiply that by two. So what's zero times two? That's just zero. So these are really kind of my square root of x values. I can look at them that way. And let's look at this now. When I take took the square root of one, I got out a one, right? But then I got to multiply that by two. So if I take this one and multiply it by two, it stretches to a two right here. Now let's go over here. When I took the square root of four, I got out a two. So I need to multiply this two here by this two and two times two is four. Kind of doubling everything. Everything is being doubled, stretched by a factor of two. And what do you think the last one's going to be? When I took the square root of nine, right? I got out a three. And then I need to multiply that by this two right here. And what's three times two? That's six. So this stretches to a six right over here. So the times two caused everything to vertically stretch by a factor of two. Now let's look at this piece right here, the x minus three. You should clearly notice that the minus three is attached to the x and it's inside the square root. It's not outside the square root. So since it's attached to the x, that tells you it's going to move horizontally. And it's just like we learned in previous videos, the minus three is actually going to cause everything to move to the right three. You got to think backwards. So this moves everything to the right three units, just like before when we were dealing with y equals x squared. We, we dealt, and I went over that clearly in a previous video, but now we're dealing with y equals the square root of x. So the minus three inside the square root causes everything to move right three, not left three. So let's do that and I'll be done. So I'm going to take each green point and move it right three. And that's why you want to use different colors when you're doing this. So I'll take this green point and move it right three. One, two, three. Put that in purple. I'll take this green point, move it right three. One, two, three. And then I'll take this green point and move it right three. One, two, three. And then I'll take this green point and move it right three. One, two, three. And the points in purple are my final graph. So let's go ahead and it looks something like this. There you go. You're finished. And what I do at the end is I just erase all the points I made before to help me with this. So I'm just going to clear all this stuff out so I have a nice clean graph at the end. There you go. So this graph in purple represents y equals 2 times the square root of x minus 3. You did it all without making a table or using a calculator. And that's it. We're pretty much done with this video, but I recommend that you stick with me. I didn't mean to erase that zero, that you stick with me so I can clear up some confusions, some confusion, because sometimes this minus 3 is outside the square roots. So just real quick, if you can bear with me, we graphed this, right? But what if it, what if the equation looked like this instead? If the minus three is outside of the square root, it's really not attached to the x. So in this situation, every point would be moved down 3. So remember, when we just did the previous one, this caused everything to move right 3, right? But this causes, if it's outside of the square root, an up and down movement, and you don't have to switch the sign. Sometimes it can get even a little more complicated. You might have something like this, a negative 1 half times the square root of x plus 1 minus 4, right? You're going to have all the transformations. And just like we learned in previous videos, all you would do is graph the parent function and then you'd apply the transformations, right? So the 1 half right here would cause everything to be vertically shrunk down by a factor of 1 half. Then there'd be a reflection over the x-axis. Then the plus one inside the square root would cause everything to move left one. 
and the minus 4 at the end of the equation, which is outside the square root, would cause everything to move down 4. Well, I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.